Ladies and gentlemen, I did it. I finally did it. I finally got rid of the fungus gnats in my home. Mostly. No, seriously, I really do think I've done a number on them. If I was to put a number on it, I'd say I've got rid of at least 98% of them. I don't think anyone ever truly gets rid of them 100%. If you have, then praise be. Now, I had a big problem on my hands. So big, I needed therapy every week to keep me tranquil. Either that, or lose my mind constantly waving my arms around in my home like a madman. You'll have heard me moan about it many times before in my videos, of course. And if you're new here, then count yourself very lucky to have avoided that. But don't let that get in the way of subscribing, of course. You know the story, of course. You sat there on an evening, watching repeats of Only Fools and Horses, minding your own business, but every 30 seconds a pesky gnat comes along and squats on the end of your nose. I hope they're not doing any funny business on there. The more plants you have of course, the more persistent this problem becomes. And let's just say I've got a fair few plants in the house. So there's been many a battle fought and lost in my home, but I think I might just have won the war. I've tried all the potions, spells, witchcraft, prayers and remedies I could get my hands on. Well, all but one and I'll come back to what that one is in a bit, but only one thing has prevailed. Nematodes. Yes, beneficial nematodes. So, my planty friend, if you're seriously struggling with a gnat infestation that you just can't get the better of, like I was, then forget everything else and get yourself some beneficial nematodes. They are the fearless little warriors that will invade all the territories of the gnat kingdom for you and destroy and conquer to bring harmony to the land once and for all. They are little microscopic worms that you release into the soil of your plants that then go on to hunt and eat the fungus gnat larvae, destroying the life cycle in the process. I know what you're thinking. Yeah. Right? I was there too, believe me. I put off using them for so long for this very reason. The idea of adding more insects to my plants made me all itchy. So I suffered for far too long with other remedies that just weren't working. But seriously, there's really nothing to be squeamish about. There's absolutely nothing to be squeamish about releasing thousands of tiny microscopic little worms into the soil of all your plants that will then hunt and insert themselves into the larvae of the gnat and eat it from the inside out before moving on to the next victim until there's nothing but a barren wasteland left. Nothing at all. I'll leave you to come to terms with that by yourself, but if you can get over it, honestly you won't look back. They're just so effective. Why? because they're not a one hit wonder like so many of the remedies out there. They stay in the soil like stealthy ninjas waiting to attack their enemy until there's nothing left to attack. This means, and this is the brilliant part, if the pesky gnats keep coming along to lay their eggs, the nematodes will always be swarming around like sharks around a fishing boat ready to eat their prey. And when there's nothing left to prey on, they simply die off and the circle of life is finished. Perfect. Do let me know in the comments if you've used nematodes before and how you got on with it. The gorier the better. So, I've tried all the remedies under the sun and have only had moderate success at best. The first thing I tried was letting all my plants nearly die at first. But Mr. Sheffield, why would you do that? It looks like you love your plants. I do, I do, but gnats love wet soil. They love it so much, they procreate in it. Weirdos. So I kept my plants on the brink of death and hoped it would deter them from starting their families there. Didn't work. I mean, you do need to water your green friends eventually, which is when the gnat sees this opportunity and makes hay. Where was he secretly waiting? It's a mystery to me. I've tried laying bowls of apple cider vinegar around the house like a madman to attract the gnats like the child catcher uses his ice cream van to snare a child. I mean, you need a lot of bowls dotted around to have any impact and I just couldn't stand the smell. In any case, this only kills the adult. The little git would have laid 100,000 eggs in the soil by the time he came out to say hello. So the circle of life continues. I know lots of you will be screaming hydrogen peroxide at the screen, and I have tried this a couple of times, but for some reason it's not worked for me. I know lots of you swear by it, but if anything, it seemed to make my problem worse. Probably because you need to drench the soil, and if the peroxide fails to kill the eggs, then you've got a serious problem on your hands. Why? because you've just made the perfect breeding ground for them to multiply and multiply and multiply and multiply and multiply until you've got nothing but gnats in your home. Is that the very definition of hell? It is for me. 
I've been recommended tannin drops, but this didn't work for me at all either. It's weird how some remedies seem to work in some homes, but not others. Maybe I've got special gnats that have developed a resistance to all these concoctions. The thought of that makes me feel ill. I had really high hopes for diatomaceous earth. The theory here was sound. The gnat rolls around the silica when he dances along the surface of the soil, gets coated, can't get it off, and dies a horrible death like a slug getting coated in salt. Sounded perfect. The grimmest of deaths. No less than they deserve. The problem is, mine must have daddy long legs because it didn't make a dent in the population. Nothing. They seem to come back stronger than ever, in fact. Maybe because they knew they were under attack and wanted to show me who's boss. The problem with diatomaceous earth is it only works when it's absolutely bone dry. When it gets wet and clumpy, it doesn't stick to the gnat. See the problem? Adding something that is meant to remain bone dry on the soil of plants. Not a recipe for success is it? Just makes a white crust on top. Mmm, lovely. The time I spent adding that to all my plants too. Never again. Now, I can practically hear you screaming at the screen, mosquito bits, mosquito bits. Yes, yes, I know all about mosquito bits. It's every plant whisperer's favourite product. I see it in the comments every day. I know the ingredient, BTI, and no, I'm not attempting to say the proper name in full, don't want to make more of a fool of myself than I already do, is meant to be the gold standard in killing gnat larvae, but guess what? I can't get the bleeding stuff in the UK. For some reason, BTI isn't licensed to be sold for home use in the UK. It's only available for commercial growers. I know, criminal, isn't it? Almost as criminal as me not getting to the meat and potatoes of this video. So here it is. Beneficial nematodes. How are you meant to use them and how can you stop them crawling all over your skin when you do? Only joking, they won't crawl all over your skin, I promise. Maybe just in your nightmares. They come delivered in the little pouch which contains a powder that a nematodes are housed in. They become activated when you add them to some tepid water in a bucket. Break up that powder real good to release all the nematodes into the water too. And this took me about five minutes of swirling the water. Once you've made the concentrated solution, you simply take some of it and merrily water your plants. I look a bit like a psychopath, don't I? It's been a long struggle, okay? Don't judge me. Right then, I am finished watering all the plants in my house. I've got a bit of a sweat on. Quite a lot of work doing all the uh, watering every single plant in the house. I've got, I think I must have over 200 plants. So we'll keep an eye on it for the next week and see if the fungus gnat population dies down. And that's it. Let them have breakfast, lunch and dinner while you imagine a life not having to constantly swat your face on an evening. Well, it's only the next day and so far, touch wood, things seem to be better already. I was watching TV last night. I didn't have too many fungus gnats land on my nose. I did spot one this morning flying in my dining room, but I managed to catch that in my hands. So that was the end of him. And Mrs. Sheffield says that she's not had too many fungus gnats fly across her screen as she's working from home in the dining room. So after 24 hours, looking pretty good. Don't know whether the uh, nematodes can work that quickly, but I don't know, seems to be working so far. Things are looking pretty good after only a day then. Yay for me, but would it last? All right, so it's the end of the first week. So I've been away for a week on holiday in Wales. I was watching TV last night. I didn't have fungus gnats buzzing around my face. So it looks like about 95% of the population has died down, which is fantastic. There was maybe just one, maybe two, just flying around that I saw in the house last night. So there are a couple of stragglers left. So we'll have to keep an eye on that for the next couple of weeks, see if we can get that population completely down. One mistake I did make, I didn't make sure that every plant in my house had those yellow sticky traps, which is really key. So you need to have the sticky traps on every single plant to catch the adults, and then the nematodes will kill the eggs and the larvae. So it's a two-pronged approach you need to take. So I've corrected that now. I've got all the yellow sticky traps in all of my plants now. Silly me forgetting about the yellow sticky traps. I did have them in a lot of my plants, of course, but there were a few I missed simply because I'm lazy. Maybe that's why I've got this problem to begin with. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think I've finally done it. I think I've defeated the fungus now in this house. I've been going around all my plants, primarily in my dining room here and my living room, been checking all the plants, disturbing the top of the soil, because that's where they tend to hang out, and also lifting them up to see if there's any at the bottom of the part. 
and I'm not seeing fungus gnats hopping around like fleas at the top and they're not like flying off into my face either. So, which is a really good sign. Also, the yellow sticky traps, I've not noticed that they filled up anymore since I last checked. So that's a really good sign. So fingers crossed for the next few weeks ahead and months ahead, I might have actually won the fungus gnat war. Yay for me. I really can't get into words how happy this makes me feel. I just really hope the little gits don't come back. I do know it's inevitable, especially when I bring a new plant into the home, but at least I now have a solution that actually works that I can call upon when it all gets out of hand. The plan of action going forwards then. First, I'm gonna try and not be lazy and keep on top of having yellow sticky traps in all my plants. This is key, not only for actually catching them but it also gives you an idea of how much of a problem you have and look I really did have a problem didn't I I'm going to carry on bottom watering just to make life as hard as possible for them as well as keeping my plants on the drier side I treat them mean and I keep them keen anyway you see I'm not that convinced bottom watering does a great deal for gnats anyway though because I always seem to see them buzzing around the bottom of the pot just as much as the top they really are persistent little creeps aren't they I think I'm also going to stop using compost and stick to using soil from Cybertan I know and I've banged on about making your own mix before and this is a great approach to take if you can find soil that isn't the perfect food for gnats but it turns out compost is just that they love it I've seen lots of comments telling me to sterilize soil in the oven or microwave but I don't know it just seems a bit odd and labor intensive to me if you want to do that though then have at it right I'm off to see if I can see any stragglers left behind to deal with appropriately and for your next viewing pleasure check out the video on the screen now and subscribe